Hey everyone, it is Monday, December the 30th, 2019, 10.30 a.m. in the morning, and this might be my last day of hiking this decade. Currently, I'm on my way to Looking Glass Rock, the most famous Pluton in Pisgah National Forest, located in the heart of the Davison River Valley area of the Pisgah Ranger District, south of the Blue Ridge Parkway, and north of Brevard, North Carolina. I'm gonna have to keep moving, so I apologize that right now the sun's directly in my face, so there might be a big shadow. When I turn the other direction, it might be a huge sunspot in the back of the camera. But this is an incredibly popular trail. I've actually never hiked Looking Glass Rock before because it's so crowded. Every time I think I might do it, I drive to the trailhead and there's usually 50 plus cars. So I just keep on going and do an alternate hike. But today I thought a Monday in the morning after a week long holiday break that most people would take Sunday to Sunday around Christmas, I might catch a break, but at 10 a.m. there are already 15 plus cars at the trailhead and five more arrived right when I started hiking. But it is a beautiful day outside. It's been unusually warm in the Southeast the last couple of weeks of December with temperatures in the 50s to 70s. And today is no different. It's gonna be 55 to 60 degrees today at these elevations with crystal clear blue skies. Feels great out here. So this hike is only a half day hike. It's between six and six and a half miles long. Rated as moderately difficult. So it should take me between three and three and a half hours to finish it. And then I'll have another half day to either do a similar length hike or knock out a few shorter hikes in the region. Because uh, one of my goals for 2020 or 2020 is to do some more work on the Pisgah 400 challenge. And there are a lot of trails along the US 276 corridor that I haven't done. So I would like to knock out as many as possible every time I come out here. But I can already see some of the groups behind me. So I'm gonna end this intro. But so far the trail's in really good condition, a little muddy from last night's rain, but it's just a beautiful walk in the forest at the moment. And I should get to more serious climbing up the rock face in about 45 minutes. After uh, more of a straight line walk at the beginning, following a stream through hardwood forest, the trail is now making a lot of tight switchbacks up the south face of Looking Glass Rock. And it's transitioned to a mixture of rhododendron, mountain laurel, other things I don't know the names of off the top of my head but this means I'm already halfway up to the south section of the Pluton, but the trail goes much further than just the south face. By the way, for some reason, my GPS has not been able to pick up a signal yet in the past 30, 40 minutes since I started hiking. So, I'm not going to be able to give you accurate mileage stats at the end of the video. I'm finished with the switchback section. I think that only took around 20 minutes. There were a lot. I forgot to count. And they're too tight on the map to really... <laughs> count them without being able to zoom in on my computer on a GPS track, but I'd estimate they're around 20, maybe 25 in total. And I know a lot of people dread switchbacks, but they were really well graded. I liked them. They were 
some of the best switchbacks I've encountered in the national forests in North Carolina. But uh, currently, I am gradually ascending the south face of Looking Glass Rock, which is much less dramatic than the famous west and north faces of the Pluton. Currently ahead of me, there's a group of about 10 hikers, and behind me, about five or six. So, trying to keep pace in between them so I can film these segments. I've already gone past the helipad, which is a few hundred yards in that direction, but there were some people at that spot. So I continued on some side trails and I figured I'd show you a video of that area on my return. But numerous guidebooks and blog posts say at the helipad on the south face, continue west on some of these juices trails and you'll come out to one of the most spectacular areas of looking glass rock. And they were indeed correct. To be honest, there may be more like this all along the official trail because the whole mountain is covered in unofficial manways that primarily lead to the tops of climbing routes. But to me, this is opening up and could be one of the best views of the day. Have to be a little bit careful descending because I guess it rained a lot the past couple days because this rock is completely covered in drainages in every crevice. Yeah, this is pretty dang sweet. Opening up completely to the west. All right, let me uh, figure out where the best vantage point is where I can uh, plop down and uh, give you the rundown of the view. Spectacular views from the west face of Looking Glass Rock. Currently, I'm looking southwest. Unfortunately, it's midwinter and the sun is pretty bad in this direction, but I'm gonna point things out anyways. Just below us, can't really see any buildings, but down there is the Pisgah Center for Wildlife Education and Fist Hatchery. And rising above it is the steep face of John Rock, which offers arguably the best view of Looking Glass Rock and is a moderately easy hike. I do have a video of that. Look up here in the top right corner. You can link to that and check it out. Um, starting at the Wildlife Center, uh, that's a five, five and a half mile loop. That includes an awesome view and a pretty good waterfall. Above that, the Art Lobe Trail follows this ridge line north-south, culminating in Cedar Rock Mountain right here, which I did about a year and a half ago. I'll also link that video up here on the right. Uh, I actually did not find the open view from Cedar Rock Mountain, so I need to return because it's also supposed to be a pretty spectacular view to the north and northwest. Cedar Rock Mountain kind of guards the southern headwaters of the Davison River. Currently I'm looking due west towards Gloucester Gap or Gloucester Gap. And just north of that, the Arlo Trail rises steeply to Pilot Mountain, which is just over 5,000 feet. I think I did that at least two years ago. I'll also link that up here. And due west, past the gap, is another region of famous Plutons in North Carolina in the southwestern Great Boston Mountains that is actually in Nantahala National Forest with the Toxaway Mountain, Cold Mountain, uh, Shelton Pisgah Mountain area on the east side of Panther Town Valley, which I backpacked, I think about a year and a half ago as well. And I have two videos, which I'll link up here in succession. The Art Lobe Trail continues north, diving into the 
Platte Laurel Creek, Black Balsam Knob area on the north side of the Blue Ridge Parkway, which follows Pisgah Ridge around Graveyard Fields, which I hiked at least two years ago, linking up here. Uh, on the left, I'm pretty confident that is Chestnut Bald, which I hiked, I think, uh, two, maybe three years ago as well. Link up here. Damn, I have, uh, <laughs> hiked a lot of these peaks in this area, surprisingly. Uh, usually I don't link cards, but, uh, I guess I'm going to link about six or seven videos on this, <laughs> on this hike. Um, due north. It's kind of the uh, southwestern edge of uh, Pisgah Ridge, which culminates in Mount Pisgah, which is out of sight. I'm probably going to get a much better view of this whole area uh, from this steeper northwestern face of Looking Glass Rock near the summit. And uh, up there, I'll probably get a better view of some of the overlooks on the Blue Ridge Parkway and the Black Balsam Knob Tenet Mountain area. Time to bust out the map and show you the route of the Looking Glass Rock Trail. There are two good maps for the Pisgah Ranger District. On the left is the National Geographic map, and this is the Pisgah Map Company map. They have pretty similar topographic scales, but I prefer this map because I think the color shading is a lot better. They label a lot more of the trails clearly, and a lot of the waterfalls, peaks, and views are labeled on this map when they aren't on this map. So the Looking Glass Rock Trailhead, labeled right here, it is pretty close to 276. You follow the trail north and then turn west, and this is the really tight switchback section that brings you up to the southern end of Looking Glass Rock. And then in this area, or this area, I think it's this area, is the southwest face or west face of Looking Glass Rock. Then the trail continues up to the summit of Looking Glass Rock and ends at the northwest face, which is also called Sunwall. You can see there are multiple trails that actually lead to the base of different sides of Looking Glass Rock, which I'll definitely have to check out one day because apparently those are, have really cool views from the base of just sheer rock walls hundreds of feet high. Otherwise, this is a pretty simplistic hike. Start here, go to the end, turn around. Lots of people on the trail, and it's clearly marked and labeled as you go throughout. Once the switchbacks ended and started climbing the south face, the trail basically became a stream, and it's continued like that for a half mile. <laughs> uh, it's pretty... Incredible that there's this much water basically near the top of the mountain and all the trail is is a heavily eroded drainage over clay at this point. Not sure how trail work can remediate this unless it's rerouted. Checking out some campsites just south of the True Summit. These are right beside the trail in a pretty open area. This is a radical change from the trail before, which was a lot wetter, uh, covered in rhododendron and other water-loving shrubs and trees. Thankfully that section is over because it was pretty damn annoying hiking through puddles and wet clay. I believe the true summit is just up ahead. There are no wide open views from the summit, but I like the change of pace from earlier. And the trail obviously continues on to the northwest wall of the mountain.
Well, I have finished the Looking Glass Rock Trail, another notch off of the Pisgah 400 Challenge list, of which I have many trails remaining. I actually finished my hike about an hour and a half ago, but it was so freaking crowded coming down. I think I passed more than 80 people, and I never got more than 30 seconds of solitude before I passed someone going down or passed someone coming up. It was pretty crazy for a Monday, despite it being the holidays. And then I got to the trailhead and there were at least 50 cars parked on both sides of the road all over the shoulder. So I decided to hop in my car and get out of there and drive to my second hike doing the Pink Beds Loop Trail, of which I'm coming to you right now. So I'll do some closing thoughts from here. In total, the hike was probably between six and a half and seven miles long which is a little bit longer than listed on the map and in books. And that's mainly because on the way back down, I checked out multiple side trails to see if they led in to any cool views that didn't have any people, but I didn't find any. Um, and then I just hightailed it back down and finished the hike in about three hours and 20 minutes, which is kind of what I expected. Overall, I'd rate the hike a solid five out of 10 on the difficulty scale. You know, moderate is the best way to describe it. And it'd probably be a four out of 10 if it wasn't so wet because about a, mi a half a mile to a qu three quarters of a mile there on top, the wet clay and wet rock really slow you down. It's kind of annoying. So if you're going to hike it, try to pick a dry day that didn't have a lot of rain a few days prior and you'll probably enjoy it more. Also, I have to say that is one of the most crowded hikes I've done in North Carolina. And if you're kind of like me and you like a lot of solitude and not big crowds, I really suggest either coming here really early in the morning, like sunrise or picking a weekday and probably any day during the summer is not that great. Um, cause you're likely going to experience the same thing as I did, which was a hundred plus people, 50 plus cars. And that's really the reason why over the years, every time I'm in this area, I drive by, I see that many cars and I keep driving cause I just, can't stand continually passing people every minute going each direction. Um, but otherwise, um, I was actually kind of surprised by the views from Looking Glass Rock. You know, a lot of people said their favorite Pluton in this area is John Rock. And I think after doing that, it's because John Rock has the best view of Looking Glass Rock, which is a really cool view. But I was really surprised by the views from the southwest face of Looking Glass Rock. It was pretty awesome. And then the northwest face, which is the northern trail terminus, also known as the sun wall. And that was the previous segment, which was wordless. And when I got there, it was a small area. The rock was wet and steep. And I don't know, there's at least 30, 35 people up there and people just kept coming in and out. So I wasn't really in the mood to stick around. I took some pictures. I took a video and just turned around, and got out of there. I have to say, though, uh, that would be a good place to have some lunch because you're staring directly north at the Pisgah Ridge area around Graveyard Fields and the Black Balsam Knob. It's a spectacular view, don't get me wrong, but most people doing this hike go straight for that view and turn around and they actually don't know about the Southwest Face. So if you're gonna do this hike, pick a weekday and definitely check out the Southwest Face because it's a lot safer and you'll get a lot more solitude out there. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video uh gonna go ahead and finish my next hike before it gets dark and i'll see you guys in 2020.